Action Pack for Grade Nine by Virginia Paris, published by House of Education. Copyright Da Al Tabawiun, House of Education, 2013. Module One, Page Five, Exercise One. Are you outgoing? Do you have a strong personality? How many friends do you have? Even very shy people usually have at least one good friend. But do you know why you are friends? Usually, our friends have something in common with us. For example, they are often our age and share our interests. It is uncommon for people to be friends with someone who is very different from them. Friends are important because they help us in life. Good friends have a sense of humor and are fun to be with. They listen when we need to talk to someone. A good friend is always happy for us, and when we have problems, a good friend tries to help. We can share everything with a good friend. Remember that to keep a good friend, we have to be kind and loyal to them. So, how good are your friends, and are you a good friend to them? Module one, page five, exercise two. One. Your friend is so outgoing; he always wants to talk to people. Two. Mazen has a friendly, cheerful personality. Three. I find it hard to meet new people because I'm so shy. Four. It isn't uncommon to have hot weather in August. Five. She has a brilliant sense of humor and always makes me laugh. Six. I'm loyal to my country no matter what happens. Seven. Dad's interests are fishing, running, and reading. Module one, page six, exercise two. One, Jerash gave the impression of being a wonderful place to visit. Two, I've always been close to my family. Three, serious thought needs to be given before deciding. Four, I've never lost any money with my reliable bank. Five, he's such a skillful player. He scores a lot of goals. Six. Abdul Rauf Shamoun is a really talented artist. Module one, page seven, exercise three. Hello there. I'm Ziad. I'm fifteen. I want to make new friends who are the same age as me. I'm outgoing. But I also prefer to be with just one or two friends. We talk about the books we've read or old films we like. I'm very creative and I write my own poems. I'm very reliable as a friend and can keep secrets. I'm always on time if I arrange to meet someone. I'm also a good listener. I try to help if I can when friends tell me their problems. I don't get angry easily. And I keep calm in difficult situations. Module one, page eight, exercise two. One. Sammy is a self-taught pianist. He learned to play the piano by himself without anyone's help. Two. Amal pursues her own interests along with her schoolwork. Three. This rice is superb. How do you cook it so well? Four. Mum's gold jewelry is really valuable. Five. The pharaoh ruled a large area on the Nile. Six. The good king wants to reign in the best way he can.
Seven. Who sent me this mysterious card? Eight. He studied philosophy at university and about life and the nature of knowledge. Module 1, page 9, exercise 4. What's your favourite subject at school? I love history. It's really interesting to learn about heroes from the past and to see how people lived. We've just done a project on Alexander the Great. He was amazing. Why is he so famous? He was a brilliant soldier and leader. He became king of Macedonia when he was only 20. Then he conquered the Persian Empire in just a few years. He didn't lose a single battle against them. When did he live? About 2,500 years ago. What else did you learn about him? Well, his teacher was the famous Greek philosopher, Aristotle. Also, he created over 70 cities. I didn't realise that he built the city of Alexandria in Egypt and named it after himself. Wow! And he was an inspiring leader that made his soldiers very loyal to him. He reigned for 13 years, but his soldiers refused to follow him only once. Module 2, page 11, exercise 1. Hi, I'm Fadi. The best thing about my job as a taxi driver is that I am my own boss. I can have a break any time I want, take a day off when I'm tired, and go on long holidays. I also don't have to wear formal clothes. I can wear casual clothes all the time. My favourite colour is red. I always find myself picking red striped jumpers when shopping for trendy new clothes. Hi there, my name's Danielle. As a manager, I have to work five days a week and stay at the office for long hours. I don't have much time to exercise during the week. That's why I decided to take up cycling at the weekends. I need to wear comfortable clothes that are practical, but they're not very fashionable. I always make sure to wear bright colours when cycling on the road so drivers can see me. Hello, my name's Peter. Today is a special day for me. I'm getting married. I have to look especially smart. I usually don't spend much time choosing something from my wardrobe, but today is different. I hardly ever wear formal clothes, but for my wedding day I have to wear a suit and a tie. Module 2, page 11, exercise 2. 1. The sun is so bright today. 2. I wear casual clothes when I'm with my friends. 3. This chair is so comfortable, I could sit here all day. 4. His fashionable haircut makes him look good. 5. He wore formal clothes to a business meeting. 6. I have to wear practical clothing at my farm to make sure I don't get hurt. 7. Where did you get that smart suit from? 8. My blue and white striped scarf looks great. 9. My sister shops on modern fashion websites to make sure she looks trendy. 10. A good wardrobe has enough space to keep all your clothes organised. Module 2, page 12, exercise 2. 1. I always feel comfortable when I'm wearing my tunic. 2. My grandfather used to wear the traditional Jordanian costume. It's very pretty. 3. Give her my jumper to wear if she's cold. 4. 
He wears long sleeves to cover his arms from the cold. 5. A good headdress keeps your head cool and doesn't move about. 6. Wear a headband when you play tennis to keep your hair out of your eyes. 7. I often wear a long robe at important events. 8. Wrap the glass in towels to protect it. 9. That dress is a wonderful garment. 10. Silk trousers are really soft and comfortable. Module 2, page 14, exercise 7. So, what do you think of this short, light blue jacket? Isn't it nice? Well, it's definitely nicer than the red one, but it's too short. Is it? It's longer than the red one. How about this yellow one? Hmm, I'm not sure. Light blue and red are the two most fashionable spring colours. Oh, I don't know. The yellow jacket is more casual and can be worn more often. The blue jacket is more expensive than the red or the yellow one. It's the most expensive jacket in the shop. Module 2, page 15, exercise 1. 1. Abide by the rules and you will succeed in this job. 2. The judge refused the bribe and sent the criminal to jail. 3. Dad's colleague really helped him at work today. 4. I just got promoted for my good conduct at work. 5. His sense of ethics stops him from doing bad things. 6. The dress code means you don't have to worry about looking fashionable. 7. No mistakes. What an exemplary performance. Module 2, page 17, exercise 6. If you answered mostly A, this means that you may be a person who is strong, mysterious or sad. Black is the colour that people wear when they are sad or when they want to make themselves look strong. It is also mysterious as it is the colour of secrets and shadows. If you answered mostly B, this means that you may be a person who is pure, neutral or calm. White is a bright, clean colour that makes people more relaxed and is a symbol of unity. However, too much white can be dull or make you feel alone. If you answered mostly C, this means that you may be a person who is energetic or who has strong emotions. It is an exciting and emotional colour, but it can also make people aggressive. Don't wear it in meetings. If you had a mix of answers, you have a good balance of colour in your life. You can take the positive parts of each colour without being hurt by the negatives. Module 2, page 19. In the company where I work, we all know the rules that we have to follow. Our manager is very strict with us. He is the one who organises the work among us. The dress code, which each one of us has to follow, makes all the employees look neat and professional. The manager warns any employee whose attitude is negative towards their colleagues. Module 3, page 23, exercise 2. What will the future bring? Here are some predictions. Computers. Computers will become our personal assistants. They'll know what we like and dislike, so they will help us make decisions. What to wear, what to buy, etc. Our lives will be much easier. We will always be online because we will wear a tiny computer in our clothing. 
This will connect to the millions of other tiny computers there will be around us, downloading and sending information to our own built-in personal assistants. Medical science. One day, we might be able to visit the doctor without leaving home. Telemedicine is trying to help doctors treat patients in distant areas where hospitals haven't got specialized doctors. Using an internet connection, a webcam, and a mouse, the doctor will be able to move a special robot around to check a patient's heart, take x-rays, and get a close-up view of the patient. Flying cars. Long ago, people predicted flying cars, but this is no longer just a prediction. It's going to happen. A company is already making a flying car, which is going to cost $200,000. Are you going to buy one? It will let you drive along a road as normal, and then, when the traffic is busy, you can take off and fly to your destination. Module 3, page 23, exercise 3. 1. The boss's assistant helps him manage all his work. 2. I can't read this book, the words are tiny. 3. Connect your mobile to my computer and I'll give you the document. 4. Where can I download that article you wrote? 5. The built-in torch on this pen is really useful. 6. Distant parts of the world can be really different. 7. How did you save that patient? You're a great doctor. 8. I design very specialised programmes for individual companies. 9. With a webcam, you can talk to your family when you're on holiday. Module 3, page 25, exercise 4. Fauzi and I are going to make a refrigerator that works without electricity. First, we are going to place a tall glass box inside a container full of water. Then we are going to put them both in a mirrored glass box. The mirrors will reflect the sunlight and prevent it from warming the container. Finally, two small fans on each side of the mirror box will circulate the air around the container. As a result, the evaporating water will keep the glass box and the food inside cool. Module 3, page 27, exercise 1. 1. Think about changing your mind. Look at alternative ideas. 2. I live by the principle that all people should be nice to each other. 3. What an accurate guess! You got it right. 4. Advances in medicine mean that people will have healthier lives. 5. I didn't think with my emotions. I thought rationally. 6. One day, flying cars will be a reality. We will actually be able to drive them. 7. I love reading good science fiction and feeling like I'm in the future. 8. In space, you float because you become weightless. Module 3, page 29, exercise 6. So, it is clear that in one of his books, Ibn al-Nafis uses the plot to express his own philosophical and scientific ideas. In fact, he included references to his own theories in it. So, he was really a scientist. Indeed, he's one of the greatest doctors in history. 
He was the first who accurately described the circulation of blood through the lungs and the body. Three centuries later, the credit went to Michel Servet and later to W. Harvey. So, can we say that he wrote that book to explain his own theories about medicine? Not quite. He explained that the main purpose of his book was to prove that the human mind can deduce the truths of the universe through reasoning and logical thinking. And what were these truths for Ibn and Nafis? The truths presented in the story include the necessity of God's existence, the life and teachings of the prophets of Islam, an analysis of the past and present of man, and a general prediction about his future and that of the planet. Module 3, page 31, exercise 2. In the heart of Silicon Valley, people are working on a new type of internet. It will be more powerful than the one we have now. Imagine you are typing an email. The internet will know its subject, and it will suggest websites and books, as well as documents, photographs, and videos you have saved that may be relevant to that topic. The new web will become smarter than the previous ones. It will connect every aspect of our digital lives. With Web 1.0, engineers wanted to make information accessible to everyone. With Web 2.0, users are able to connect with one another. Now, engineers are developing Web 3.0. This is going to make the web much more intelligent. With Web 3.0, they are going to give the internet a brain. Revision, modules 1 to 3, page 34, exercise 4. 1. Team means together everybody achieves more. 2. Some people dream of success while others wake up and work hard at it. 3. One hand doesn't clap. 4. People know you for what you've done, not for what you plan to do. Module 4, page 37, exercise 1. It took primitive man thousands of years to invent writing. All over the world, different civilizations developed their own languages and their own writing systems. The more efficient the written language was, the faster the civilization developed. The Egyptian civilization, the Sumerian civilization, ancestors of the Iraqis, the Indus Valley civilization, and the Chinese civilization were the first to communicate by writing. This is why they are considered the most developed ancient civilizations. Samples of writing from these civilizations have survived. They are about 5,500 years old. Hieroglyphics were one of the first modes of graphic communication. Hieroglyphic writing was the picture writing that Egyptians and the Mayans used. Nowadays, systems for writing are based on symbols for sounds, not on pictures. We call these systems alphabets. The first alphabet was invented in Ugarit, a town on the northern coast of Syria, in the 14th century BCE. Module 4, page 37, exercise 4. 1. The primitive technology in that town just doesn't work. 2. I'm very efficient at work. I don't waste any time. 3. The Sumerian civilization was in modern-day Iraq. 4. An ancestor of mine, my great-great-grandfather, was a captain. 5. Communicate with me more. Let me know what you are thinking. 6. One of the first forms of writing was Egyptian hieroglyphics. 7. I love travelling by train. It's my favourite mode of transport.
Module Four, Page Thirty Eight, Exercise Two. One. Bricks made out of clay have a lovely red colour. Two. The government is doing a good job of running the country. Three. Cotton is suitable to make everyday clothes. Four. These running shoes are really light. They make lifting my feet for every step so much easier. Five. I can carry my portable radio with me everywhere. Six. Papyrus was one of the earliest materials that people wrote on. Seven. Don't hurt the messenger; he's just bringing the news. Eight. The country's economy collapsed and led to many problems. Nine. Private companies are not run by the government. Module four, page thirty-nine, exercise two. If you want to discover the desert and experience the life of the Bedouins who live there, you have to visit the Wadi Rum Desert in Jordan. If you spend enough time there, you will soon be able to read and understand the surface of the sand like a book. If you see eaten grass and a disordered surface of the sand, you will know that a herd of sheep had passed from there. You will also notice the difference between a young traveler's footprint and that of an older one. If you see wavy lines in the sand, you will know then that a snake was there not long ago. Module four, page forty-one, exercise one, one. Look at that temple over there. It's so huge. Two. Excuse me, scribe. Could you write this down for me? Three. Alphabet is a set of letters used to represent the sounds of a language. Four. We got three geometric figures in our maths test. It was difficult. Five. The combination of the two colors, red and yellow, results in the color orange. Module four, page forty-three, exercise six. The pressure used when writing can reveal a lot about a person's character. When someone presses down hard when writing, they are usually nervous. When someone writes lightly, they typically deal with unpleasant situations very calmly. People who press down a medium amount are often good at dealing with stress. You can use a pencil to draw a line that reaches for about 55 kilometers, or to write up to 45,000 words. A ballpoint pen, on the other hand, can only draw a line between 1,200 to 2,300 meters long. The color of the ink we choose can tell us a few things about our personality. For example, people who choose green ink may show a desire to adapt. And a sociable person may choose blue ink. Red ink points to violence or dominance, and black ink suggests power. If you write using your right hand, you can read the writing on a pencil. If you use the other hand, the writing will usually be upside down. Writing using separate letters suggests that you're spontaneous or artistic. Writing using attached letters indicates that you're highly cautious. If your writing is in between the two, then you will have a balance between reason and feelings. Module five, page forty-nine, exercise one. Social scientists have found that money has very little to do with happiness. Today, Dr. Zahir Ibrahim is going to talk to us about money and explain its effect on people. Hello, Dr. Ibrahim, and welcome to our show. Thank you. Well, as you said, money actually brings satisfaction, 
but not happiness. The extraordinary thing is that people seem to know that money won't make them happy, and yet they continue to work hard to earn money they don't need. They also borrow money from people in order to buy unnecessary things. And why doesn't money make us happy? Well, first, what matters to people is not really how much they earn, but to make more money than other people around them. Second, buying things doesn't make us happier than those who don't. And finally, making money doesn't allow us to have more fun. In fact, people who make a lot of money have to spend more time at work. Then why do people act as if money makes us happy? It's simply because every day we only hear messages telling us that money is good. The messages that tell us that it's okay not to make money the center of our lives are few and far between. So we probably save some money, we end up with lots of possessions, but that doesn't mean that these things would make us happy. Module five, page forty nine, exercise two. One. I borrowed money from my brother to buy a new camera. Two. I don't like to take money from my parents. I like to earn it. Three. I'm trying to save money so that I have enough for a new car. Four. Do you want to make money? Then work here. We'll give you great pay. Five. Possessions are important, but having things isn't enough to make you happy. Module five, page fifty, exercise two. One. No one likes a miser who never spends any money. Two, isn't it amazing that one banknote can be worth more than lots of coins? Three, this toy is so cheap; it costs only one penny. Four, ancient Egyptian pharaohs were buried in a coffin or a box. Five, Ada leads a simple life; he doesn't like to show off. Six. A ceremony is a good way to celebrate something important. Seven. My bank account became empty after I spent all that money. Eight. Will you take a check? I don't have any money with me. Module five, page fifty-three. Exercise one. One. Aid should be given to anyone who needs it. We need to help everyone. Two. Look, the ambulance is parked right outside the hospital. Three. The volcano was a huge disaster. It destroyed thousands of trees. Four. If those states were better at communicating, they could be a federation. Five. The soldiers were always happy to see the medic healing them. Six. Switzerland is famous for its neutrality. It doesn't choose a side. Seven. The Red Crescent is available so that no one is left suffering. They help anyone who is hurt or in need of medical attention. Eight. A volunteer is very kind to give up their time and money to help others. Module five, page fifty-five, exercise six. First aid. Usually, when you wake up for work or school, you will go through your day normally. However, there are some situations. When a basic knowledge of first aid could be very helpful or even save a life, for example, what do you do when someone starts suffering from heat exhaustion? If someone doesn't drink enough water in hot weather, 
they may get heat exhaustion. The symptoms include nausea, weakness and a headache, but if you don't treat it, it becomes heat stroke. This is more dangerous and can be life-threatening. Help someone with heat exhaustion by giving them plenty of water and putting them in the shade. Do a first aid course and learn more about how to help save lives. Module 5, page 56, exercise 1. I'm bored. I want to do something useful. What's wrong, Noura? Don't you think we are living very easy lives? There are so many people who are suffering. Why don't we do something about it? OK, but what do you propose? I don't know. Some old people's homes are asking for books. We could ask our friends for books they have read and take them to the homes. You've got a point there. My grandma's friend is in a home and she complains that they have seen all their DVDs and read their books more than three times. It would be nice if we could get them new ones, right? Absolutely. We can begin by phoning our friends and asking them if they have old DVDs and books that they no longer want. That's true. And we could also start a campaign at school. You're right. I wonder why I didn't think of it. Let's make a poster. I suppose we can, but don't you think we have to ask the headmaster first? Hmm, I don't know. Why don't we ask our English teacher? She's always talking about aiding people with problems. Module 5, page 57, exercise 2. Do you know an institution called Takaful? Yes, I know a lot about this organisation. Can you give me some information about it? Who works in it and what do they do? So many people joined the organisation since its foundation in 2011. Its main purpose is to encourage unity and teamwork in society. Volunteers establish a cultural and social bond to work together and help and support others. There are almost 15,000 volunteers helping out. Thank you so much, Hakim. I didn't have any idea about this organisation before. A little help from friends is always useful. Module 6, page 61, exercise 1. Our earliest ancestors just ate fruit, roots and seeds in the forests of Africa. But one day, about a million years ago, they wandered out of the forests and into the African lands. They discovered many types of animals there and started to eat them. Once they began to eat meat, they could travel further and further across the lands because food was always available for them. Our ancestors' progress was very slow, however. They only advanced 10 kilometers in each generation. That's about two paces a day. Trails of bone and stone tools have shown that it took them about 25,000 years to leave Africa and explore as far as Southeast Asia. Although we don't know the exact route they followed, we do know that by 250,000 years ago, our ancestors lived in Africa, Asia and Europe. But our ancestors' journey didn't stop there. About 11,300 years ago, the world's climate became very cold. The oceans froze and there was thick ice between Asia and North America. People and animals walked across the ice from Asia into North America, but it took them another 5,500 years to reach South America. Their journey across continents isn't possible today. Where there was once ice, there is now a narrow sea called the Bering Strait. Module 6, page 61, exercise 2. 1. A radish is the root of a plant that grows under the ground. 2. Ayman planted a seed that grew into a beautiful flower.
Three. I will reward you for your progress because you have improved a lot. Four. The first generation of settlers is the first group of people to inhabit an area. Five. My little brother moved forward a couple of paces. Six. We followed the trail of bricks that led the way back home. Seven. There are seven continents in the world, and Asia is one of them. Eight. Mum closed the gate because she didn't want the baby to wander onto the street. Nine. When Noor saw her teacher in the supermarket, she advanced towards her to say hello. Module six, page sixty-one, exercise three. One thousand. Five thousand five hundred. Twenty-five thousand. One hundred thousand. Two hundred and fifty thousand. One million. Module six, page sixty-two, exercise two. One. We had to wait till the blizzard calmed down because we couldn't walk in such cold and rough weather. Two. Mr. Jamal could not work under such bad conditions, so he took the day off. Three. The scientists went on a great expedition to find a lost temple. Four. When I grow up, I want to be an explorer and discover new places in the world. Five. Three men died of exposure in the very bad weather of the Antarctic. Six. Cover your hands and wear warm socks because frostbite is easily got in freezing weather. Seven. I wish I were the pioneer who was first to explore Antarctica. Eight. That car accident, which hurt many people, was very tragic. Module six, page sixty-five. Exercise one. One. The crew on the ship worked together to make sure the boat ride was smooth for all passengers. Two. I am an enthusiast of outdoor games and try to attend every game I can. Three. We plotted the places we wanted to visit with pins onto a map. Four. They waved at the ship as it sailed away from the port. Five. The captain checked the sails and rigging before sailing off. Six. I love sailing because I enjoy travelling over the sea like they did in the past. Seven. I have to go through hard training for the football game so that I play well. Eight. The Titanic was a huge vessel that used to sail across large oceans. Nine. Summer won the race by reaching the finish line before anyone else. Module six, page sixty-seven, exercise four, one. C, calendar. Two. G, yacht. Three. B, sails. Four. F, rigging. Five. E, crew. Six. J, coast. Seven. A, map. Eight. H, celebration. Nine. I. Parachuting. Ten. D. Ship. Module six, page sixty-nine, 
Exercise 3. Monday, 16th April. We have been in Jordan for three days. We have seen and have done so many interesting things here. On the day we arrived, we went to the market in Madaba. It was an amazing experience. Noisy, crowded, and very colourful. Since we got here, we have visited many historical and touristic places in Jordan, like Petra and Jerash. Revision, modules 4 to 6, page 72, exercise 6. The period between the 15th and the 17th centuries was known by the age of exploration. During this time, navigation witnessed great progress since a large number of explorers went on journeys by sea. Many countries gave their sailors money to pay for the needs of the crew and to buy new vessels. These countries wanted to trade goods and know more about new lands. Many pioneers wrote about their expeditions and the new continents they discovered. Activity Book Module 3 Page 21 Exercise 2 According to a survey of internet experts, Most people agree with predictions that in 30 years we are going to become more dependent on computers. However, 42% of the people surveyed think that humans will not have the ability to control this technology. Experts predict that some people will choose to live without the network. They agree that English is going to be a universal language for communication. But they also predict that other languages, such as Arabic, Will become as important. When people were asked this question, will the world be a better place in 30 years because of the internet, 46% agreed and 49% disagreed. Activity Book Test A, page 60, exercise 1. Dear Sir or Madam, I would like to apply for a job with your company. I am studying hospitality management at university and I'm looking for a part time job. I like working with people and I'm sure I can learn a lot in your company. I like travelling and swimming. I can speak English and Arabic very well. I am available for an interview from Monday to Thursday. You can contact me on my mobile number or via email. NB Please find attached my contact information. I look forward to hearing from you. Sincerely yours, Sammy. Activity Book Test B Page 63 Exercise 1 Last summer, Saleh went with his family on vacation to Mozambique. One day he went fishing with his father in a small boat. While they were in the middle of the sea, something started moving in the water near the boat. First, they thought it was a dolphin, but then they saw a big shark moving and knocking the boat. Saleh was terrified and started screaming because he thought they were going to die. He almost fell into the water, but his father held him and tried to push the shark away. Finally, people in another fishing boat heard them. They saved Saleh and his father from the shark and took them home. Teacher's Book, Test A, page 121. Listening, Exercise 1. Hi, Sammy. I hope you are doing well. Do you remember I told you in my last letter that my first impressions of this country were negative? Well, I was wrong. When I said that I didn't like it, that the streets are so crowded with people, I didn't realise that it was for a good reason. Most people walk to work and not drive because they care about the environment. I also thought that people were not friendly, but when I spoke to them, they appeared to be very kind and welcoming. I didn't know that first impressions can be very wrong. I can't wait to see you. Take care of yourself. Love, Adel.
Teacher's Book, Test B, Page One Hundred and Twenty Three. Listening, Exercise One. Hello, my name is Amira, and I am an architect. In my job, I have to be very creative. I design modern buildings, villas, hotels, and houses. I always take nature into consideration when I draw a new design of a building. I try to leave as much space for gardens and trees as I can. It's not easy to do so because sometimes the area can be very small. But I always find a way to include some green spaces. I love my job because I can make my country more beautiful and preserve nature as well.